Hello, friends and family on YouTube. Um, want to talk about something that often gets asked. I mean, people think about this a lot. Uh, Christians think about this a lot. Uh, I often say we are in the times where the church is falling away, and it's falling away. We're, we're there. Uh, you look at all the things that are, that are going on in church. Most of you younger folks, I mean, it's hard to even see, fathom, or have the remotest of knowledge about uh, the way the church has changed because it's what you've always seen. Uh, but I'll tell you, you've seen change in your lifetime. You're seeing, uh, if you're 40 or younger, you have, uh, or over 40, you've seen uh, women go into the pulpit and lead men and women, uh, which is not permitted biblically in the church. Um, you've seen uh, gay marriage in the church, homosexuality in the church. Uh, if you're Catholic, you've seen even more, uh, or you've seen the same. Uh, the Pope just condoned homosexuality. He has said that there are many ways into heaven, and many of the Protestant preachers have been saying the same thing. And if you're 40 or above, you know that's none of those things I just said are uh, were ever normal anywhere in historical uh, Christianity. But I don't want to use the word Christianity right now. Uh, well, yeah, I guess I'm forced to, but it's the... Christianity is really about your relationship with Christ. Um, I would go to Second Thessalonians in the Bible, and I would read chapter 4, because it sums it up perfectly for me. And you will see that it's not what the churches are teaching today. There are some. Uh, but they're fleeting and they're going into the ash bins, unfortunately. And when we read the book of Romans, we see that that, that, that was forecast to happen. Uh, and we don't get told about that either, very rarely. Um, I hope if you have a good, decent church around you that you go to it. Uh, but be careful. And you know you're there when folks like me are warning you and telling you, be very careful when you step into a church. Uh, we are in deception, grand deception right now. Um, I'm going to try to just read a little bit about what being a Christian is all about, but you, you're, you've probably never heard nobody's telling you. Uh, you've probably heard that uh, go in, give to God. Uh, the pros it, That is called the prosperity gospel, that God wants you to prosper worldly with physical goods and things and possessions on this earth. And... Uh, I would challenge you to broaden your perspective, get in discernment, and discernment is studying what you're studying, actually studying what you're learning, and, and figure out if it's right. And I'm going to try to work this computer where I can read you just a 
few short things out of the Bible where uh, they are describing themselves uh, or Paul is describing what they, what they do and what they go through. And it's not pleasant. And I would like to reiterate with everybody in this day and age where so many of the churches are telling you, so many of the pastors are very, very well off. Uh, they've taken the Old Testament book of Malachi and believe that they need, the preacher needs to be adorned in gold and purple and riches. and uh, That's just not so. And we, we know that historically because all the apostles uh, went through such despair, uh, were tortured, and uh, were murdered with the exception of uh, John. Uh, and we're, the consensus is very sure about that. Um, it's only been recent that they've tried to say, well, no, this apostle over here was okay. This apostle was rich over here. And they're doing that to try to confuse you to make them look like they're okay because when you put these preachers in these churches up to any of the apostles and what they went through, and you ask yourself, these men walked with God on earth. Uh, they were friends to the Lord God, and the Lord God was friends to them. And why would 2,000 years later, God had just totally changed his mind and want to give physical riches to the same people that the first 300 years uh, had their heads chopped off and lit the uh, dipped in gasoline and put on poles and that's what lit the streets of Rome. Um, and the misery and the torture and the murders that the apostles suffered, see? So I'm trying to get you folks to really understand, really get it. Um, everything you do, you need to do, you need to put Christ and his name in the front of. Everything good that you're trying to achieve or trying to do, you need to pray at night that what you're doing is God's will. And if you figure that it is, and you come to the realization that it is, you need to walk in the boldness of a polar bear in your fight in life. And you need to constantly be giving the glory to Christ, and you need to do that outwardly. You should do that outwardly. Uh, we're not in an age where we should seal up. But I'm going to try to read something to you if I can get this thing here over where I can keep this up here. All right. Um, I'm going to try to move it over just a hair more. I don't know if I'll be able to or not. Maybe I can move this over. Y'all excuse me, I'm half illiterate uh, on the computer. And I don't have my glasses on. As usual, I'm not prepared. It hits me and I do these videos. Uh, I never sat down and just have things written out. I may be looking down or looking over, but it's just habit. And I'm not really looking at things. Uh This is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 4. And this is verse 7. But read the whole chapter. Get, and you need to do that. You don't need to be plucking things out of context. Uh, and that's what these wolves in sheep's clothing are doing to you every day. Uh, they've got you so confused. And in a day and age, you can't send your 
child down to the schoolhouse uh, without getting taught the uh, the standards and practices for a good satanic life. Uh, you 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 really need to know the Bible with all this chaos and confusion. Um, this is, I'm going to start at verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in us, in our body. And what he goes on to explain and talk about there is, is the... Uh, what Christians have to go through, which we're not taught in church no more. You've really got to die to be born again. And I'll give you an example. I always say I'm, I'm working on this. I'm working on that. Uh, trust me, if you knew me 15 years ago and compared it to me today, you would say, a lot of this fellow's died, and a lot has. Not nowhere near enough. I'm always working on it. I'm always working on it. Uh, and you should be too. You should be working on this. Nobody's going to get into heaven unless they're born again. I'm going to tell you something that's going to perplex and get a lot of people on me too. Nowhere in the Bible will you find a sinner's prayer. There's not one single prayer. I've been a Baptist all my life, and they've prided themselves on this. Uh, but it's just not in the Bible. Uh, where you just say one prayer and you walk off and you're fine and dandy. Now, I'm not saying that you can work your way into heaven, but I am saying there's a process going on if you're genuine and you truly believe. And if you're genuine and you truly believe, there is a process going on. And you are dying. The old you is dying and the new you is being born again. And we work a lifetime for that. Hence, we continue to sin and we're never perfect. And this is why Jesus died on that cross. And most importantly, arose back to life and ascended to heaven from that cross. That's what this is all about. After Jesus ascended up, we, we got a remarkable thing. There were, uh, in the books of Acts, uh, uh, the apostles had a season where they were able to just heal people, uh, do all these wonderful works and things, and then that stopped. And what happened is the Holy Spirit came over and started enveloping uh, the believers. And that's what guides us. That's our moral compass of right and wrong. And blasphemy is blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that's the one thing it says that we don't, we don't get forgiveness for. And there's a lot of things that can be said there. And I'm not saying if you've done something, you can't be forgiven for it. There's a lot of aspects going on there. Uh, but I, I do want to tell you, you're not going to be able to get down on your hands and knees, say a prayer, get up and walk away and continue your same worldly life and think you're okay. Uh, no man that is not born again born again will enter heaven and or the kingdom of God and you've got to die to be born again how can you be born again 
and unless there's death there. And Paul talks about this in Second uh, Thessalonians, and it's talked about in other books in the Bible as well. But I want you to really, I hope that we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're going through this. We're in this. Uh, we're in this, but we're not in despair. We're persecuted, but not cast down. That means there's no way, what are they going to be able to do to you? No more than what they did to the apostles. And I tell you right now, them apostles are in glory, beautifulness, peace, no sorrow. Everything is greater than any of them ever thought possible. And it, and it can be for us too. And that's what it's all about. It's not about giving a uh, hundred to the church and God giving you 700 back. I can't remember where it's in the Bible, but the Bible thoroughly explains that when we are doing good for the poor, when we are giving to the church, when we are, when we are doing these good things and these good deeds, uh, we do get back. But those things <clears throat> are stored up for us in heaven, see, and they have completely perverted that. But they've perverted everything. They've perverted uh, fathers and homes. They've perverted marriage. Uh, they've perverted sexuality. They've perverted gender, which is thereof. Uh, they've perverted science. And what happens is, you end up setting back, and this is the big th the big lie here. This is the big doozy here. They'll get a semi smart. They'll get a smart fellow, but someone who is not intelligent and lacks wisdom. They're very smart, but they lack wisdom, and they will play on that man or that woman. And before you know it, and I've got a family man. Boy, she just rocks and rolls. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Yet she doesn't believe in the creation, that it happened as God said. She doesn't believe that the flood in Noah's Ark happened as God said. And she doesn't believe the end's going to happen as God says. And Christ says she doesn't believe at all. And she doesn't. She's getting nowhere. Nowhere. That woman will never make it into heaven. Never. Uh, unless she gets faith to believe. And they trick you on these sciences and different things. They trick you emotionally. Well, you are being discriminatory against these homosexuals. No, you're being discriminatory uh no more to these homosexuals than you would be your own husband or wife who would be out here sleeping around with other people. It's just things you're not supposed to do. This is about sexual sin. It's not about discriminating or things that, that they put forth to you. It's about right and wrong. It's about good and evil. But yet they'll trick you up emotionally that way. They'll trick you up intellectually uh, to where you just won't be able to wrap your head around. And uh, a guy has built a replica of the ark. I believe it's in Arkansas or Kentucky in the United States. And you can clearly go in that big, massive tanker-like replica uh, and easily see that the two and newsflash seven of a kind in many cases of animals that, and things that were taken on that boat would have come off and uh, bred back into everything. It's pure science. Um, they took two horses and a horse is a horse is a horse. A miniature horse is a horse. A huge Clydesdale is a horse. 
see, and you they just get you all confused. They get you confused about the the flood, but God said in the end, the rocks will be singing out my name, and right now they have just discovered uh, what God had decided had told us in the Bible what was going on before the flood that there was no rain then the the water came up and nested up from the ground see and no rain came until after the flood and we're finding out science is saying right now right in this moment they've went further down in the earth and there is so much water down there. And what happened in the description of the Bible, the earth busted open. We now know that we're, we're, we have been able to go down in these with these robotic things to big, wondrous depths that we couldn't have before. And we are now seeing all these ridges and these pockets where the water was busted up. And uh, things about people living long, that can be answered as well. Um, we are now finding through concrete DNA evidence what we considered cro magnet man, an in-between man uh, that had the big, huge uh, brow ridges here. Uh, but other than those things, and some carbon, which I'll say in a minute, were the same. And uh, the only bone in the in the body, uh, when you look at us old people, it looks like our eyes are sinking back as we get older. That's not happening at all. Our brow ridge up here is the only thing that keeps growing. So when you run up on somebody, they're in their 90s or maybe they're 100 years old today, that brow ridge is typically out further. Uh, we're finding those things out. Uh, concrete science here. Uh, we are discovering that uh, all these fossils on top of the the, 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 the hugest highest mountains. Uh, we are science is proving that the Grand Canyon, for example, was made very quickly not over hundreds of thousands or millions of years of water that used to go through it, uh, that it, it happened at the spur of the moment thing. Um, uh, the rocks are singing this information out. That is what's happened. We know uh, through soil samples, ice samples, uh, especially ice samples because it holds it holds this stuff. It holds this carbon and these other materials. And we now know that uh, through going further and further down in the ice and bringing those tubes of ice up, that uh, the carbon levels uh, were really high. They were vastly higher than they are now. And man and animal alike and insect alike, all living life was bigger, stronger, faster, and lived much, much longer. That is answering the, the hundreds of years that people lived. It's answering the hugeness of some of these people. Uh, we have found bones, which they have hidden. Uh, I, I just find it hard to believe that Lincoln going from Illinois to Washington, that he would have stopped in Ohio and looked at these great big giant huge skeletons and went to Washington and just made the story up and lied and uh, talked about them in speeches and uh, wrote about them. But all these skeletons have disappeared. They claim the Smithsonian's took them up. And they probably have. I, I don't know. I can't answer that question. But one thing I can answer is they're trying to pull the wool over your eyes on every single thing. Um, I can't answer this etched in stone and concrete. But we know that they were mixing animals according to.
to the Bible coming from Genesis 6, we know there were men of renown, men that they base superheroes off of today and that they uh, uh, based all of the uh, uh, the old tales about Zeus and Titan and all these people. Uh, I forget what you call that. I studied the heck out of it, but I forget what you call it. Uh, the, the, this was off of true stories. It wasn't fantasy land like they tried to make it out to be. And the thing is, is if you open your eyes and you really start looking and you really start diving in uh, to discern what you have been taught, it tears what you've been taught all to pieces. Um, we are now finding out that Genghis Khan, for example, had great technology at his disposal. Technology other peoples did not have. Uh, There's a lot of interesting stuff going on, and I'm telling you, the rocks are singing out God's name in many different ways. Uh, they, they recently found and have verified uh, David's King David's residence. Um, there's a lot of things going on today. God's shouting to you through the rocks, but a lot of you have been so confused that you just can't listen. And uh, that's very sad. Uh, the only thing that adds up, even the astronomers are going over to Christianity in droves uh, because science is telling them hey, what we've been thinking is wrong. Um, we are finding out, you know, the Lord tells us we're, we're in a place that's not real like the place we're going uh, if we go to heaven or if we go to hell, that those places are more real. And we're finding out now through the, the uh, I forget, it's, it's not quantum, it's a physics that, is uh, I forget what you call it, it but it's a physics of the, the study where there's no law in the physics itself and they are studying dark matter and all sorts of things and uh, they're telling us they're putting it online but no but there's nobody in church there's no pastors and it's not getting put out there in, a, in an effective way uh, that you could look at these things and uh, get the information in the first place to be able to start to question for the behalf of uh, the proof of the Bible. Because you, we don't even, we're at a point we don't know how to add two plus two. Hey, this stuff, they, the remarkable stuff they said here, uh, now they admit was was one thing a hundred years ago or five years ago or three months ago has changed into this thing that's totally in agreement with the Bible. And uh, none of these things are being said. So I know I got off on my tangent. I always do. But I want you to and uh, want you to realize that being a, Christ, a Christian is getting rid of the world, letting the world and the portions of the world in you die out. And it's a, it's a process. You can't just get down on your hands and knees and walk off in total and not do anything and not read a Bible and just go down and sing songs and feel emotionally good and cry on Sundays while you're singing songs or break dance with the preacher and tattooed all up and down his body, uh, hippie cornrows trying to look like a hipster, uh, that, that's not going to get you into heaven. It's not going to get you close. Uh, but the devil wants you to, uh, that's the fun thing uh, to get you on, to make you feel good about yourself. And, uh, really, none of us should be feeling very good about ourselves, but we should have the peace 
as Christians that we're always dying and we're going to be born in everlasting life. And we need to keep that in mind and we need to keep in mind if we're living on this earth and we're living good and everything's great for us, maybe we're too worldly uh, because those apostles didn't, Christ didn't. Uh, uh, the first Christians didn't. There was nothing easy, but they had a calmness. Even though the world was cracking them down, they were not in despair because they know what's coming for them. They know. They believe that. And it would be my hopes that you would believe that too. So we'll be back on to some boxing in a little while. Uh, Joe had an excellent workout yesterday. Day before yesterday was his day back. I just got the guys in there, got them loosened up. But yesterday, boy, they, they sure did work hard. I'm very happy with the guys. And, uh, boy, Joe just shot shot an extra effort all over the place yesterday. So, And when he does that, the rest of them do it. So, and they help him. They, you know, they motivate one another. And that's another thing. Uh quickly on Christianity. It's going to change who you want to be hanging around with. Uh, your, your happiness is going to be derived from building one another up, not tearing one another down. So keep that in mind, folks. Much love to you. I wish God's blessing on all my Christian brothers and sisters. And to the rest of you, if, if, if you start to hear a knock at that door, check it out. You will be glad you did. <laughs>